Booktube, this is Kelly. Thank you so much for watching my channel, Books I'm Not Reading. I am here today to review Trust by Hernan Diaz. Um, uh, this won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction this year along with Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. Um, I think you've, if you've been watching my channel, you'll know like that is a very big deal. We've never had two Pulitzer Prize winners in a year for, uh, for the, that particular category for fiction. So, uh, yeah, it's very unusual, but, um, I was able to snatch this up, um, the day it was announced. Demon Copperhead, not so much, but, um, anyway, so I did read Trust. Um, I was looking around, there are a lot of reviews of this book, um, because it was also, um, I think it was on the Booker long list maybe. Um, so it's gotten a lot of attention on BookTube. Um, I also found an interview that I will link to down below. Um, uh, Hernan Diaz was a guest on Seth Meyers' late night show when the book was published. And uh, it, it, it's a very it's a very funny interview, and they end up talking about fountain pens and things like that. And Hernan Diaz is like, "Do you really want to talk about fountain pens, really?" <laughs> but uh, anyway, I don't think there are any spoilers in that interview, and I will let you know if I go into part of this video that's a spoiler, um, because I, I I really do want people to read this book and keep talking about it. It's it's fascinating. If you've read it, please keep your comments spoiler free, but I would love to know what you thought of this book. First of all, the title, the cover, I don't know. I've seen other covers for this book, but I can't see them up close. so I don't know quite what they are, but I think the title of the book is, is genius because we instantly know that it's about money. And we also know like, no, we shouldn't like, these are going to be, there's definitely going to be at least one unreliable narrator in this book, right? If someone tells you to trust, um, in the literary world, like you should be on your guard, um, that, that, that may be turned on its head. Um, this book takes place in the 1920s and 30s, which makes a lot of sense again, because it's about money. Um, so it is, the structure of it is what I really find the most fascinating. It's broken into four categories. The first one is a novel, um, and um, that's called Bonds. So again, right from the beginning, we know, okay, like this is a novel. It's, it's going to be about money, but it's also going to be about relationships, which I think is true throughout the book. Um, but it was very strange reading that first novel, knowing that like it's a novel within a novel. And so the names are going to be changed and there's going to be different things that come out of it. But, um, I was, I was trying as I was reading Bonds to not get too attached to those particular characters, knowing like they're like, it was a very kind of meta experience. <laughs> like these are, these are, you know, literary covers for other people who are, you know, other real people who I'm going to meet later in this, in this novel. <laughs> the second um, part is um, an autobiography by Andrew Bevel um, called My Life. Um, and then there is a memoir by Ida. I can't remember her last name. The final section is called Futures by Mildred Bevel. So just even looking at the table of contents, you're like, oh, okay, um, there's an Andrew Bevel and there's a Mildred Bevel. So I should probably like pay attention um, as I'm reading Bonds and, you know, see if I see, do I, are, are the Bevels mentioned in any of, in, in the book? Anyway, so Bonds is about Benjamin and Helen Rask. Um, and it talks a lot about his, Benjamin Rask's, uh, work in the stock market on Wall Street, his, you know, great ability to accumulate wealth. Um, his wife, Helen is a philanthropist and a great supporter of the arts. Um, and, uh, things sort of deteriorate with her character as the novel goes on in, in bonds. Um, 
And then we get to the autobiography by Andrew Bevel and quickly realize that Andrew is actually uh, Benjamin Rask. But Andrew, uh, it, it's presented as like, this is the complete thing, right? Like my life by Andrew Bevel. And as soon as you start reading it, you realize like, oh, this is like a, like a manuscript. This isn't really, you know, there's parts where it's just like, talk more about blah, 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 blah. You know, like, like it's not fully fleshed out. The third um, section is a memoir. Again, what's, I should know her last name. Ida Pertenza, um, who, um, whose father is an anarchist. And um, anyway, so I, I don't want to go too much farther into what the, the and the last section features um, by Mildred Bevel is journal entries. So, so we have all these different kinds of writing. We have a novel, we have what's supposed to be, you know, nonfiction, a, a memoir, and then journal entries. And again, I think the title really explains to us, like, we really have to question each narrator. Um, what is, what is the truth? What isn't the truth? Um, and, you know, in some ways, like we are all unreliable narrators in our own lives, right? I thought the structure of the book was really, really brilliant and maybe the best part of it because each layer, as you go through it, you sort of feel like the, the, a veil is, is being, is being lifted up, right? <laughs> like, like it's, and it gets more and more stripped down. I gave this book um, four stars. The only reason why I gave it four stars, and I, I may, I may go back and change it to five stars because it is a really great book. Um, I felt like because the last two sections are told in a female voice, um, I didn't, I wanted more distinction between those voices. Um, because the memoir and the journal obviously are both, both written in first person. And I just couldn't quite like, and again, I think maybe if they had been, and I, I don't think he could have separated them out because of the structure of the book, which is again, just genius. Um, but I didn't feel enough distinction between the female voices that I wanted to feel. I wanted to feel how different those two characters really are. Um, so, okay. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about some spoilery things here. So if you haven't read Trust, I want you to read it. Tell me what you think. Come back later. Um, but I'm going to go into some spoiler things. Maybe you don't care about that. Um, but if you do, you should definitely stop watching the video now. So um, I think one of the things that's fascinating about this book is that we know we know because of when it's set, what's coming, right? The big world event, the stock market crash, 1929, the beginning of the Great Depression, um, which the characters don't. Um, uh, really only the first part of the book bonds, right? Like that's the only place where, because it's written afterwards, right? It's written after the fact. Um, can we see what is actually, what's actually, headed their way. And of course the Bevels, they don't suffer. They don't suffer from the Great Depression because they see it coming. Um, which is a really, really interesting idea. A really, really interesting idea. I also, even though I, I wanted more distinction in the female voice, I do think Hernan Diaz gets and was trying to make a point about the marginalization of women, that in this period of time, women are more ornaments. They're meant to, again, you know, be philanthropists and, and care about other people, but like, they are not mathematical geniuses. How could that possibly be the case, right? Um, they're not, um, they can't be smarter than their husbands. When we think about big money, especially in the 1920s, a lot of male names come to mind. I did think right. that he was really trying to explore the fact that 
women are completely absent from the world of finance, especially at this time. And part of me feels like that still holds true. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I, I definitely don't feel as much, again, when, when we're talking about money, the stock market, that sort of thing, it just always seems to be from a male perspective. Um, but again, I'm not like, I'm not like swinging on the stock market right now. <laughs> so I don't pay, I'm not paying as much attention to it as, as maybe, I, maybe I should. Um, but I, I did appreciate the fact that he was trying to talk about the role of women in finance. Um, uh, and if you watch the Seth Meyers interview, he does actually talk about, um, you know, how even the language around finance is meant to, it's, it's meant to be more confusing than it needs to be. Like it's, yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's, it's almost silly in some ways. Um, I do think like this is a worthy Pulitzer Prize winner. Um, there have been a lot of books, a lot of Pulitzers that talk about the Great Depression um, or life before the Depression. Um, but I'm not sure if there's one that's right there, like bef the before and the after. Like, I'm not sure there's one that's like right on the point of it and that deals so much, not only with money, but also with a marriage. Um, so I really, really liked that kind of the contrast of this world of finance again, which like even in Andrew Bevel's memoir, he's like, oh, it was shocking. Like women were buying on the stock market, you know? Well, later on, of course we learn more about like what's really happening. Um, but I do think like, it, it, again, I'm always looking for what does this say about America right now? Because in theory, it's not a it's it's not a hundred percent true every every year for Pulitzer winners, but um, in theory, the Pulitzer is supposed to sort of address like Americana or American issues. If you look at the history of the Pulitzers. Um, I think each each winner speaks to, if it's a historical novel, not only the time, you know, like this one, right? So it's not only talking to us about the 1920s and the 1930s, but it's also talking to us about right now, right? Like, so I personally, and I, I rarely, rarely talk about politics on my channel, but most of the people in the Senate and the House of Representatives um, in America are, are I think are bought out by the 1% um, in the world who, or, or in the United States, um, who have interests that they you know, want to make sure nothing happens to them. I come from the world of, I mean, not professionally, but um, yeah, like I live in a very boom or bust kind of city because it is so dependent on what's going on with um, oil, gas, Trona. If you've ever heard of Trona before, um, you know, the natural resources of the world are very, very important to the economy of where I live. And if they're not doing well, then there are no jobs. And if they're doing well, then there are more jobs and more opportunities. Um, and it's really, it's, it's, it's challenging. Um, it's a challenging thing, especially when you are trying to also like make sure that the environment is protected as well, which is also part of one of our incredible natural resources where I live. This is very much talking about money, making money like compound interest, <laughs> you know, like using your money to make more money and using that money to make even more money, like just the multiplying factor of it all. Um, but when I think about this book in terms of 2022 and 2023, I'm thinking about um, politicians and um, their connection to Wall Street. Um, you know, the Occupy Wall Street movement. And again, of course, the 1% that seem to 
control so much. I'm not sure, you know, like I can't say like that's what like Hernandez was was definitely going for, but that's what I took away from it. And that's also my best guess that I'll probably ever have about why it won the Pulitzer. I would love to know if you have read Trust, what you think. Um, do you think it deserved to win the Pulitzer Prize? Um, again, please try to keep the comments spoiler free for those who haven't read the book. But um, yeah, I'm really curious uh, as to your, your thoughts on this. So I know a lot of people on BookTube have already read this and made reviews. Um, so there's plenty, plenty of reviews out there. But again, I'd love to hear from you. What do you think about this book? Uh, if you don't feel comfortable leaving a comment, you can leave some sort of money um, related emoji in the comment section, or you can give this video a thumbs up just as a way of saying hello. Um, I do really appreciate that. Um, BookTube, thank you so, so much for watching my channel. It means so much to me. Um, please remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I'll be back with another video. Bye.